Hello and welcome to Glassnode Academy. Today we're looking at a metric called the net unrealized profit and loss, which provides an aggregate cyclical oscillator for the amount of paper gains or losses that exist within the market. So let's start our analysis by defining what we mean by unrealized. Now when a UTXO is created on chain or a coin is moved in other terms, what this means is that we can assign a price as a cost of acquisition or a purchase price for that particular coin. Now if we compare the unspent coin to its current price, what it is in the spot markets, we can establish how much profit or loss is held as a paper gain or a paper loss in that particular coin. That's what we define as the unrealized profit and loss. Now what the net unrealized profit and loss does is it applies that calculation across all UTXOs in the entire set and it then normalizes the aggregate value of that against the market cap. So what we're measuring is a proportion of how much profit or loss exists within the overall market as a proportion of market cap. And what we can do is we can correlate this to the cyclical and fractal behavior of market structure, market cycles, and investor sentiment. And we can also then use different variants of the net unrealized profit and loss metric to understand what's going on within different cohorts, whether it be entity adjusted, short-term holders, or long-term holders. So in terms of the metric inputs, it's principally made up of the difference between the market cap and the realized cap, otherwise the spot value of the network and the stored value of the network, then divided by the market cap. So normalizing to present as a fraction of the overall market cap. So what the metric is tracking is the aggregate paper profit or loss that's within the system. We can also correlate this looking at previous market fractals and what happened before and after those events to understand a little bit about market sentiment, whether we're in bullish markets, bearish markets, or in a transitional phase, such as a capitulation or a blow off top. We can also use this metric to identify various concentrations of supply. When we have a large section of the market that has accumulated coins in a particular price range, when we see price move either higher or lower from that range, we can see the magnitude of unrealized gains or losses that occur as a result of that price move. And this provides insight into how much supply is potentially concentrated at certain nodes within the price structure. And in terms of some key values that we can pay attention to, with positive values, it indicates that there is an unrealized profit across the board. And it can also indicate with higher values, euphoria, greed, and an increasing incentive to sell. And in very, very high profitability regions, it can start to suggest we're moving into a euphoric blow off top region. And conversely, negative values indicate that the aggregate market is below its cost basis, it's holding unrealized losses, and it can be symbolized by fear, stress, and eventually an ultimate capitulation at the bottom of bearish markets. So let's jump now across to Glassnode Studio and we'll see how the net unrealized profit and loss metric appears in practice. So here we are in Glassnode Studio and we're looking at the Bitcoin net unrealized profit and loss metric. Now what we can note is it's a general cyclical oscillator where it finds peaks during euphoric bull runs before trending down towards steep capitulation points at the bottom of bear markets. Now we also have a color grading scale which has been generally mapped towards different human emotions and sentiment that we see across market cycles. So during the bottom of bear markets we have a phase of capitulation where the maximum cross section of the market is currently underwater and we can see that we have values that are severely negative, less than zero, and that's indicating that on aggregate the market is currently underneath the cost basis and holding net unrealized losses. Conversely, as we trend through phases of hope, optimism, belief, and then into euphoria, we can see that a great proportion of the market is currently holding paper gains. And the unrealized net unrealized profit and loss metric is signaling at euphoric tops, some portion about 75% of the overall market cap in terms of value that's currently in profit. And this creates an overwhelming incentive to sell as a large portion of that market are holding onto those paper gains. Now what we can also see is that during very violent and volatile moves, such as after blow off peaks, during capitulation phases, we see very, very large moves in the net unrealized profit and loss metric. And what this is providing us in that the size of these moves is indicating where we have concentrations of supply, at the very least where we have supply that is underwater or in profit. So as an example, if we take our 2018 capitulation event, which fell down to a lows of minus 0.36, 
If a large proportion, let's imagine 90% of the supply had a cost basis down here in the previous bull market, we would not have the same magnitude of losses that could be realized. And this overall capitulation event would be substantially less if a larger proportion of the supply remained in profit. So the fact that we have an extraordinarily large downside move into this capitulation phase suggests that an overwhelming majority of the market has a cost basis that is currently higher than that event. And this provides us an indication when we have these extreme events of blow off tops or capitulation events, particularly when it comes to macro cycles. So the first key variant of the net unrealized profit and loss is our entity adjusted metric. And what this does is it discards any internal or self transfers between the same entity. Now what this does is it provides a view on the more economically meaningful transactions, filtering out self spends, relay transactions, and internal wallet management, for, for example, by exchanges, by miners, or by institutions. So what this does is it provides an improved view of the economic activity, and we can see on the right hand side that it's relatively similar to the standard net unrealized profit and loss, but in particular it provides superior accuracy if we're looking at estimates of the actual profit or loss that's being held across the market by filtering out some of those economically unimportant transactions. The second variant is our short-term holder net unrealized profit and loss, which filters for only the cohort who are holding coins younger than 155 days. And these are coins which are statistically more likely to be spent in response to market volatility. Short-term holders generally reflect newer market entrants and potentially those that are less experienced with the volatility of Bitcoin. Coins are statistically more likely to spend when held by these entities. And this metric is generally more volatile than the standard net unrealized profit and loss, given that many of those coins are accumulated close to the current spot trading value and therefore oscillates around smaller profit and loss multiples as coins are regularly respent in response to up and down moves in the spot pricing. And our final variant is the long-term holder net unrealized profit and loss. And this filters only for the cohort holding coins older than 155 days, and these are statistically less likely to spend in response to volatility. Now the long-term holder variant generally reflects more experienced market participants, those we would otherwise classify as the smart money. Given that these coins are less likely to spend in response to volatility, and over time they generally build up larger and larger profit multiples, Rather than seeing profit multiples of a few percentage points, 0.25 or minus 0.25, the long-term holder net unrealized profit and loss tends to reach values that are much higher than one as larger and larger profit multiples are reached during exponential price rallies. And what we generally see here is a more experienced base where it smooths out the metric, particularly towards euphoric tops, where less volatility is taken on by long-term holders. And we see more of that volatility come into the metric during capitulation bottoms and bear markets, where long-term holders who've accumulated throughout the bear market, weather the phase of the capitulation and the bottom formation, and then ride into more smoother territory as the market moves into a more bullish trend.